Hello everyone, this is Loco S. In tonight's video, we're going to be covering mission editing with the carrier and naval units. A uh, big part of DCS is aviation, but in aviation, we do actually have access to, uh, obviously, we do have access to near, uh, naval aviation units like the F 18 Hornet, the Tomcat. Soon, we're going to be getting uh, units like the A 1 Sky Raider. We have Pretty soon, hopefully, we'll be having the A7 Corsair 2, uh, A6 eventually. So we're gonna get a uh, so naval aviation is pretty uh, big in DCS, and we even have a free mod that uh, here the A4 Skyhawk, which is a free mod, which also is carrier based. So there's plenty of naval aviation in DCS, and uh, and mm -hmm. also of equal importance and in note is the fact that naval av. Uh, Naval units can also be used as threats in your mission, both for good uh, to work against you and for you. And you can even actually set them up to do uh, strikes in game. So we're gonna go over a whole bunch of different uh, ways to use naval units in game. Uh, we're gonna start off with the carrier because I'm quite sure for a lot of you, you uh, the F-18C is a very proper module. You want to fly the Hornet off the deck. Uh, also, for all you Tomcat pilots, you really want to fly it off the deck because it was very rarely used on shore. So, we're going to go ahead. Uh, there are several carriers in game. Uh, the two major classes of carrier that we have are the Nimitz and this class here, which is the Forestall. Uh, there are a couple of other carriers in game, and they all generally have the same uh, setup. So, we're going to go ahead and use the Forestall here as an example because it, it has. Uh, every every system that you will definitely be able to set up on all the other carriers. So, first thing to note uh, with a carrier is that obviously it has to be placed in the ocean. All naval units have to be placed in the ocean. That is something that should be fairly obvious. Um, yeah, unfortunately, if you want to practice carrier ops on land. Um, I think there might be a mod or two out there that allows you to like get the uh, the landing box for it, but other than that, you're just your best bet is to literally just have a static object in the ocean, just place it out there and practice with that. Uh, second thing to note is that um, also when you pl uh, before I even get to this, when you place the uh, the ship fleet, something to keep in mind is that like ground units, and we'll get to this in the ground units tutorial. Uh, if you place units sort of uh, in a formation like this and don't give them a uh, and you don't give them a formation command, which with ships you can't, they'll remain in this rough formation around the first unit you place. So the first unit we place in this for uh, in this fleet is the carrier, and we gave the uh, the group a command to move over here, and the rest of the units we placed uh, we placed the units and then we moved them around. So when we move the fleet, the, the fleet will stay in this formation um, using the carrier as like the pivot point. So the carrier is in the center of the group and all the other ships will move around it. And that generally uh, is how all the fleets work. Uh, whatever formation you set up here is whatever formation they have. There are ways to kind of work around that, but you would have to set up each ship individually. And then you would have to basically copy and paste the ships so that they get a rough formation. Um, the best way to do that would probably be have one ship do the full uh, patrol route and then copy and paste the other ships in the rough formation that you want and then you have to fine tune it. It's complicated. It's not really worth it uh, until uh, I get to one problem with having a lot of ships in a single group for later on. But we're going to go ahead back and focus on the carrier here. Uh, things that you have to worry about uh, the with the actual setup for the logic. And you'd want to set this up on waypoint zero because in that way it loads at the beginning of the game. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. It's from the start, set up with all these uh, systems. So for all carriers, for all carriers, and I do even believe ships because I think um, individual ships can use these as well. But I know for the carrier for certain, you have to do underneath perform command, you have to do several things in order to set up the system. You have to tell to activate the TACAN, which is the tactical rate, which is a tactical air navigation radio that 
a lot of aircraft and DCS used to navigate around. Uh, these carriers do have attack in. Uh, it is important that you set it up because INS systems don't work to, na to navigate to carriers because they rely on fixed points, and the carrier does move. Uh, and I'll get to that. Um, I should mention, actually, while I'm uh, mentioning it, uh, the carrier, uh, you should always, if you have a carrier group with your fleet, I mean, if, you, if you have a carrier in your fleet, and obviously you, you're using it for uh, flight operations, have it go into the wind. That is standard per carrier procedures that the carrier sails into the wind. And you also should have it going at a decent speed at the start. And at your second waypoint, um, you don't have to get it up to speed right away. But we should probably definitely get it a little bit faster. Like, there we go. Uh, you definitely want the carrier going at a decent speed because the faster the carrier is going and the more wind is blowing over the carrier deck, um, the, faster the, to the faster the effective wind speed is. And that helps with landing. Uh, and it also helps with takeoff. Uh, it gives the it gives all the uh, assist, gives all the uh, the aircraft a little bit of an edge for takeoff and landing, and for carrier landings or and operations are already difficult as is. So on that, so we're going so going back to the systems. Uh, again, you want to activate attack. You want to activate attack in. Uh, I see us. And also, uh, before I forget, attack in. Name doesn't really matter too much, but I like to keep everything. Uh, in this case, we're using STA for Saint Arc, so which is what we call this carrier STA. Uh, name and call sign are used, I believe, by certain aircraft. I know that this the call sign is, I believe, I think the call sign is automatically generated in Morse code. And I know certain aircraft, like the F-18C, they'll pick up the uh, the TACAN signal, and they'll actually, in the, um, I believe in the HSI, will actually give the TACAN's call sign in the HSI. So you definitely want to have these go, have these both selected. Bearing is important because that turns it into that gives the bearing, in, um, that gives the bearing range, that gives the bearing information to the station in addition to the range. So. You definitely want bearing. Channel mode is generally going to be uh, is generally always X for ground stations. You want it to be channel. Uh, we're doing. You could select any channel. We're doing five just because we can. Uh, call sign STA, and also we have to select the unit that uh, the TACAN signal is originating from. And in this case, we're, there's only one option, so we're going to pick the carrier. So going down here, uh, activating ICLS. Before, again, it's underneath the perform command. Activate ICLS. Uh, again, you want to name it. Uh, again, I, I like to try to keep the name of the thing, uh, the name what we're naming it, across, uh, similar across all systems. So then that way it just, it's a lot easier or, or to keep track of everything. Uh, we're going to set the channel to the same, again, just for simplicity's sake, and the unit that it originates from, which is UFS St. Mark. And ICLS is the naval-based uh, ILS landing, uh, instrument landing system. Uh, if you're going to have, and if you're going to have a, I would probably say a series of missions with the same carrier, uh, definitely just enable and just leave it enabled because whenever you re whenever you build a mission, uh, the next time, it'll just automatically be there, and that way if you have a night mission or a bad weather mission, ILS is always uh, ICLS is always up, and it's just a good thing to have in general. Uh, it's there's nothing wrong with having ICLS enabled. Uh, during case one recovery, which is your quote unquote ideal recovery situation, where it's like good clear weather in the middle of the day, it's just a good thing to have it all um, all around in general. And a lot of naval aircraft are equipped with uh, ICLS compared to uh, ILS for a, it's only a ground based system, so you might as well let them use the system that they might not normally get to use. ACLS is automatic carrier automatic carrier landing system. Uh, the F-14 has had this for a while. I believe the F-18C somewhat recently got this as well. Uh, it will actually, uh, uh, this actually hooks into the air. Uh, this is the carrier actively hooking into the, um, 
I want to say the autopilot and the systems of the aircraft and help to help it land. Uh, I see uh, ACLS uh, again. Normally, this is something that you might only use occasionally. Uh, I think generally the standard oper uh, standard procedure for a lot of naval aviation is to try to land it manually. But I would always just turn it on, leave it on. It's a feature. It's enabled. Um, you can you can always just I would always just have this on. And again, you you have the name and you have the unit that it originates from. Link 4 is very is a Tomcat only feature. Uh, Link 4 is a very old this at this point in history and life. Uh, Link 4 is a very old um, data link protocol basically and it's what the Tomcat uses. So Link 4 is originates from the uh, is basically you're having this set up so that the carrier uh, uh, can transmit on the Link 4 network. And again, you can give it a name here. Uh, this name, I think, has more to deal with do uh, deal with the actual um, name of the actual trigger. So, but we don't have to worry about that really here. Uh, this is the name that's going to appear on the data link down here. SDA again, try to keep everything similar. Uh, frequency you can set whatever uh, what frequency the uh, Rio has to tune into to get the data link working. And then we're going to use this on again from the carrier. So that's setting up the carrier for all the different systems. Uh, in general, you want TACAN, ICLS, and ACLS on every carrier. Link 4, if you're using Tomcats, activate Link 4. It's just a good, it's another thing. It's another system that um, the Tomcat has that doesn't really get to play around with if anything else. So you might as well set it up for Link 4. What we're going to hit next uh, uh, we're gonna just go over some quick things that the other ships that uh, the naval units have compared to other units as a quick review. Uh, rules of engagement, like I mentioned before, uh, basically either have it to hold, with holding fire, returning fire, or free fire. Alarm state, whether it's uh, how ready it is, uh, what uh, in what state are its air defenses, uh, if it can engage air weapons. A uh, quick note on this: this is extremely important for carrier groups. Uh, especially modern carrier groups because of the nature of modern carrier combat and like naval surface uh, warfare. A lot of the weapons that are going to be fired at carrier groups are basically long range cruise missiles and long range anti-ship missiles. So you want to have in, uh, engaged air weapons on so that you want to have engaged air weapons on for friendly ships so that they actually have a chance of defending themselves against attack. Uh, if you're wanting, if you're going to have hostile ships that you're trying to target on a mission, you might want to, you might want to enable or disable to uh, adjust the difficulty. Just know that if you're trying to shoot at enemy ships that have engaged air weapons enabled, uh, there's a good chance that if you're having a single F-18 with like only two uh, harpoons trying to engage like a fleet, it's those two tarpoons are going to be shredded to pieces before they even hit anything. Uh, so you might want to adjust the, you might want to quote unquote adjust the difficulty of that, and then instead of having like a single ship of a single one ship Hornet with two tarpoons, maybe have like a whole wing, um, or at least flight of four Hornets with four harpoons each, attacking a fleet, because then that way there's more harpoons, more chance that something will get through. And again, just adjust the difficulty. Uh, don't make it a kill condition for a win in that case. Make it so that if one or two ships get hit, um, mission accomplished. I will say uh, harpoons. Some of the anti-ship missiles in DCS have wonky damage values. Uh, harpoons are notoriously weak in this game. Um, other anti-ship missiles are significantly more powerful. It's just how DCS is. Uh, interception range is again like like other SAM systems. How far out do the SAM system, the SAM and SAMs engage? Obviously, if you put it um, pretty close in, they won't engage until the system's fairly close. But the system will have way more energy and will be very will be significantly much more lethal just because instead of engaging instead of engaging it at its like maximum theoretical maximum range, it's engaging at fifty percent of its theoretical max range. So 
it's going to be way more difficult. Um, counterpoint, uh, don't make it too close because then otherwise you'll just have, uh, you'll be able to get enemies or friendlies in like ridiculously close. So it's something you can play around with, something to keep in mind that you can change. Forming command, uh, hold, tells you this to stop moving. Invisible makes them invisible to AI, but not players. Immortal makes them immortal. But what we want is, and there's no uh, in root task. In root task is something more for uh, air units. We want to go to perform task. And there's two things that I want to point out here. There's attack group and fire at point. Attack group doesn't really work for naval units in the sense that, I'll actually bring this up. You can attack ground groups, but the problem is, and I'll go here with, we'll say the, uh, we're gonna attack the AAA battery on this, uh, on the island. The only thing that can actually attack the AAA battery on the ground are these unguided shells. And basically, that's the guns on the ships. So you're going to have to get fairly close in range, and you also have to get within visual range. So it's not like uh, it's not like like a battleship where it could like arc its shells like over a hill and hit the target or do anything like that. This is very much like there has to be a direct line of sight between the ship and the group, and in order for them to actually shell the group with guns. So. Unless you sail, unless you sail a ship fairly close to shore, and the enemies are within uh, on the shoreline more or less, you're not going to really get them to shell the uh, enemy with uh, their guns. It is something that can be done though, but you're going to have to like basically sort of get the ship within maybe a mile or two of the coast, if that. Uh, your better bet is. To use cruise missiles. Now, the problem is cruise missiles are not standard ASMs. Those are standard anti-ship missiles. And it goes to the point where it goes to the point here where attack group is really only use uh is more useful for attacking other ships. So a ship group using the attack group command is better suited to attacking other ships than land units. Now, that being said. If we go to fire at point, what'll happen is you'll get a first off this little bit of uh, this, uh, you'll get another um, line that appears. So we have this line and there's a little triangle at the end. This is the target point. The triangle is the target point. So we're gonna go over here, drag it all the way over here. And now this is coming from the carrier. That's because the carrier is the center of the fleet. So, it's not we're not going to get uh, cruise missiles coming out of the carrier. It's going to these uh, cruise missiles are going to come out of the uh, the ships that have the capability to fire them, which are currently, which is currently only our destroyer. So I set this uh, fun little target here. So scenario is the this transport plane came in and it dropped off these two SA nine and these two SA nines and these SA nines are going to give us. Uh, pain in the course of this campaign with uh, trying to ta tackle any of the uh, our cast missions with the A4. So we're going to go ahead and take these out with a single cruise missile so we don't have to worry about seed with IR missiles. And fire point uh, as a quick uh, as a quick uh, brief on it. Zone radius zero feet. So basically for the cruise missile barrage, you really want the zone radius to be zero. You want this to be a very precise attack. Altitude, uh, you don't want to be you don't want there to be any altitude. You basically want this to be again on the ground. You want to very specifically tell it to use a cruise missile. And you very much want to expend only one round. If you set the zone radius to anything more than zero, they'll basically have the cruise missile hit anywhere within that point, which we don't want. Again, altitude is zero, hits the ground. Well, you want you want to fire uh, a land-based, a land attack cruise missile on the ground. Uh, again, cruise missiles, that's what you want. 
if you don't select rounds expended one, it'll just keep and you have this. It'll just keep on firing a cruise missile, uh, cruise missile, cruise missile after cruise missile after cruise missile, at this one single point, until it burns out of cruise missiles, which is not what we want. So we only want to fire one cruise missile at this point. Now, in this fleet, we have only one miss. We have only one ship that could fire uh, tomahawks, and that's this early bird here. The two other ships. Besides the carrier, are these frigates? Uh, Oliver Hazard Perry's. Uh, they can only uh, Oliver Hazard Perry's cannot fire uh, tomahawks. So, the good news is is that in this kind of a formation where only one ship can fire a cruise missile, uh, using this logic with this group, every ship that can fire a cruise missile would would fire one at that exact same spot. So if we had nothing but a four. Uh, Arley Burke destroyers or Ticonderogas or a combination of Ticonderogas and Arley Burks, all four of those ships would fire a single cruise missile at that one spot, which would not make a whole lot of sense. So in situations like that, what I would do is if you want to have uh, multiple ships that can fire cruise missiles firing them, do something like this where you have a second cruise, a second uh, Arley Burke destroyer. So we're going to go in here. USA, because this should be the quickest way to find it. There we go. DGG, Arleigh Burke Destroyer. Uh, now, we're not going to adjust the, worry at the speed or anything. What I would do is have a second, basically, destroyer in the group. Try to match the speed with... I try to match the speed with what's uh, listed at both of these waypoints and try to keep their waypoints roughly equal distance, and it'll roughly keep formation with the other ships. So it'll look like it's part of the same fleet formation, but you'll actually have two separate cruise missile attacks. So in here, because we don't have to set up the carrier, all we need to do for this group is do perform task, fire at point, cruise missile, rounds expended one, Go down here. And that's how we want to we want to hit this. And we could have a second cruise missile hit here on the ship on the aircraft. So that way we would have two ships firing two cruise missiles onto and into the uh, combat area. And you could repeat that with even a third ship. And then you can also, with these uh, cruisers, you don't necessarily need to only have one cruiser firing one missile at every um, at a time you can set up multiple fire at point orders so we're gonna go ahead and delete uh, delete this unit and we're gonna have this cloned and by cloning an action it'll repeat the action down here so we can go in here and edit six and then we can have another fire at point action, which is, again, zone radius is zero, alt uh, altitude is zero, which is going to hit the ground, cruise missile, round expended one. Now we want to go over here. We need to find where that sixth point is. There it is. So it's a little hard to tell, but it did actually drop the two right on top of each other, which is what what you should expect. Now, sometimes uh, sometimes the a uh, the UI makes it a little bit harder to see that, but indeed you will have two fired at points. Uh, usually, when you clone an action, it'll do the exact um, thing, including dropping the target point on top of that. So with those two. Fire points set up. It'll fire a cruise missile at the specific at these SA nines and one of the aircraft. Uh, something to note with fire point before I end this video, or at least, well, I'll double check my notes to make sure I cover everything. But one point before I get off this topic is you can set up fire points on triggered actions, and then that way uh, instead of having 
the cruise missile fire off at the very beginning, like we are here, we could set it up in triggered actions. So we could set up a fire at point. Hold on, four, there we go. We're going to set up a fire at point here. And basically, in the logic, in the mission logic, we would have uh, whatever condition, whatever those conditions were met, it would fire, it would begin the uh, cruise missile attack. So there's that as well. So we're going to go ahead, double check my notes here. And that's pretty much it, actually. Yeah, I covered everything I wanted to. Uh, we're going to go ahead. Um, I want to load you into the mission here, and I want to show you exactly uh, how that how the uh, cruise missile attack looks. So, loading into the mission here. Tomcats are loaded. Tomcats are on the deck. Forestall. So there's one. Two. And so there's the two cruise missiles, and there we go. So that's how you fire cruise missiles uh, from ships, as well as setting up the carrier group for carrier operations with the navigation and landing assist systems. Uh, keep in mind again before uh, keep in mind uh, that a lot of the, uh, a lot of these uh, options that apply to SAM systems apply to ships. Uh, if you want to make attacking uh, ships ship groups easier or harder, you can adjust if they'll intercept the uh, they'll intercept any of the anti ship missiles or anti air uh, uh, anti air launch weapons that send against them. Although. Again, I make make it a little, make it a little too easier. Uh, keep in mind also that damage models, uh, damage models in, on ships is kind of iffy for, with, with, DC, with, yeah, with DCS with certain weapons, uh, especially harpoons. So if you're fighting against like Chinese ships with uh, you, like if you're doing a U.S. Chinese uh, comp, uh, confrontation and you're trying to sink some like Chinese transport ships, keep in mind that your uh, harpoons are going to do nearly as enough damage as they would against the contemporary um, in real life but you can um, but if you're going in with a Vigan their cruise missile like their anti-ship missiles might uh, might do a one-shot KO on it it's all how it goes um, other than that if you're doing uh, if you're trying to have like multiple ships launching cruise missiles at multiple targets uh, you can definitely set up uh, each ship to fire off a their own you can you can have one ship uh, fire off like all the cruise missiles or you could have like multiple ships doing uh, multiple fire uh, launches and just keep in mind that every time you do a fire at uh, point uh, trigger command or even a waypoint action it will tell every member in that group that is able to use that ordinance to fire a single round or however many rounds at that spot so with cruise missiles but in ships, you generally want one cruise missile per slot. So let's see how they're going, actually. They're just taking her a little way. And then this thing also to keep in mind, uh, these are not, these aren't gun rounds. These aren't uh, like super fast missiles. They're just cruising along and they'll eventually make their way to the target. So we'll end the video with an explosion. Uh, not very often you get to see mission editor videos end with any kind of excitement. So we're going to go ahead 15 times uh, timeless acceleration. Get these cruise missiles on target. There we go before they disappear on us. And there's cruise missile number one. And here's number two. And that does bring up a good point. Um, as you can see, the cruise missile did come in at kind of a, a not like a super deep angle, a steep angle. So keep in mind that you, you're um, if you do set up barrages, uh, be careful not to set them up in the middle of cities or in like super mountainous areas, or be careful at least what angle you shoot them 
uh, in the mountains. Just because I get the feeling with that that kind of an angle, you might not always get a hit where the uh, cruise was has to like basically nose dive to hit the target. So, and in any case, that's it for that. Uh, that's, it, that's it for naval groups and DCS at the moment. Uh, I might do if I do follow on videos, it'll be if there's some like fu uh, funky new sp um, funky new uh, functionality added or if we get a whole bunch of really cool new naval units or we come up with like other really neat ideas. But until next time, this is Lock OS signing out, where we will probably do a different group. And I believe uh, basic uh, fixed wing AI, and well, actually, even it would even apply to rotary AI. Uh, so basic uh, air combat AI is going to be up next. So until then, see you later.